This video is going to look at why conductors such as metals conduct electricity and why insulators such as plastic, glass, lumps of cheese do not conduct electricity. If you've seen the video called The Atom that I made, you'll be able to recognize this. And the important parts from this are the middle, that's called the nucleus, and the nucleus contains protons and neutrons. And these that fly around the outside called electrons. And the electrons follow the path of these black circles around the outside. And these are called shells or orbitals. Now these, this basic of this atom is really important for the next step. So it's really important you understand this structure before we move on to metals. Have a look at these two pictures. On the left hand side you've got your protons, neutrons and electrons and this is your atom. On the right hand side you may notice at the top it's missing an electron. Therefore, it's not an atom anymore. This is called an ion. So an atom with more or less electrons is called an ion. Now this one, because it's lost a negative electron, will be positively charged. And again, it's important you notice the difference between these two because we're just about to talk to them in metallic bonding in the next slide. Here is the structure of metal. And it's made up of these red dots that you can see on this picture. And they're your free electrons. And they come from the outer shells of the metal atoms. And we call those a sea of free electrons. Now we call them a sea because they act just like a liquid and they can flow about. And we call them free electrons because they're free to move. And they can move about within the metal. Now, if those outer, electron, el outer electrons have been taken away from the atom, then what's left are these grey circles, which are the metal ions. And because the electrons are negative, these are going to be positively charged metal ions. So, just to recap, your metal, or all metals, are made up of a sea of free electrons, and what's left behind are your positively charged metal ions. If you're really good, you can call these free electrons by their more technical name. And that is a sea of delocalized electrons. Now delocalized means that they've detached themselves from their original atom and they are moved about and are shared by other atoms. But free electrons is good enough but delocalized is their more technical term. So coming back to our original question, why do metals conduct? So metals like copper on the left of this picture has a sea of free delocalized electrons that can move about. And plastics, insulators like plastics on the right, do not have this sea of delocalized electrons, so therefore they don't conduct electricity. The last thing to note is that even though metals do have this sea of electrons, it doesn't mean that they're moving. Now in this electricity topic, we will see exactly how we can make them move. 